Today what we're looking at are differentials, okay? This is a new thing, okay? We're defining the differential x and the differential y, okay? Now, you'll notice here we have this function y equals x squared, and we've zoomed in on the point where we have 1, 1, okay? Now, one thing you can't see, because it didn't come out in the printing, is that we also have this tangent line to the, at the point 1, 1, okay? So that's our tangent line, all right? Now, what you guys saw yesterday is that we had what's called the tangent line approximation of a value, and basically, if we find the equation of the tangent line at a point, then we can plug in values of x really close to the point of tangency and approximate what the actual function will equal using the equation of the tangent line instead. But as you could see, it you, we got off a little bit. For example, on this point here, there's a difference here where we're a little bit off, okay? Now, what we want to look at, though, is how, um, you know, how could we use this? And, and we also want to identify this differential. And there's a difference between the delta y, which delta y is the difference in y from one point to another on the function, okay? So delta y is on the function, okay? The differential, we use the notation dy, okay? Now that is on the tangent line. Okay? Now, you might say, okay, well, there's delta y. What about, is there a dx, okay? Well, you'll notice here, both of these are going to be at the same value of x, all right? So we actually have, um, I'll do purple since that's red and blue combined. Delta x is going to be the same as dx, all right? There is a differential for x, but that's going to be the same thing because you're coming over the same amount, all right? Now, in this case, the point that we would be dealing with, because they told us delta x is 0.01, would be 1.011, okay? Now, you'll notice here dy is the distance from here straight up to the point on the tangent line. Delta y is the distance from here straight up to the function itself. All right, does everyone understand what we're doing so far? Okay, we have two different distances. One is the delta y, the other is the differential. Okay, now it says here to find dy when x equals one and dx is 0.01. So let's actually look at how we would do this. If y equals x squared, we could take the derivative dy dx, and that's going to be 2x. All right? Well, this is dy over dx. So what if I multiplied both sides by dx? I would have dy equals... 2x times dx. And guess what? We actually know what dx is and we know what x is. All right, so x was 1. Um, and dx is 0 0.01. Okay? So dy is going to be 2 times 0 0.01, so that's 0 0.02, okay? 
So that is the distance here is 0 0.02. Now we could have found this another way if we had just used the equation of the tangent line. Up here we were told the, the tangent line is y equals 2x minus 1. If I plugged in the new value of x, y equals 2 times 1.01 .01 minus 1, I have 2.02 .02 minus 1, which is 1.01. .01. So this point right here, or I'm sorry, 1.02. .02. This point right here is the point 1.01, 1.02. Well, that confirms what we found with the derivative. To go from 1 up to this point, we have to increase 2 one hundredths. So dy is 2 one hundredths. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, guys? You with me? Okay. Now, it says we need to compare this value with delta y. All right? We're going to compare this with delta y. So let's look at delta y. Delta y is this whole distance all the way up to here. Well, that's the point 1.01 .01 and 1.01 .01 squared, which... 1.01 .01 squared is 1.0201, okay, if you did that, all right? So, compare the value of dy with delta y. Well, what's delta y? The difference in our y coordinates is 0 0.02. Zero one, right? So look at that. Our dy was point zero two. Our delta y is point zero two zero one. So the difference is only one ten thousandth. Okay. There's only a difference of one ten thousandth. Okay, does that make sense? Now, what I developed down here using the derivative is actually one of the principles that we can examine here. And that is that if we have this equation of the tangent line, we saw this yesterday when we were doing tangent line approximation, the delta y, the delta y is essentially how far off we are, is going to equal that, and that's going to be approximately f prime of c plus delta x. So, Basically, what we have is this. If we were able, to, if we knew what the value of the function was here, and we wanted to know what the value of the function was there, we could simply take the derivative of the function at the point that we know and multiply it by how far away that is. If you think about it, it makes sense because what is the derivative? It's the rate of change right? And if our rate of change is delta y over delta x, then the delta y is going to equal the rate of change times delta x. Now, what are we assuming takes place here? If we're going to use this, we're assuming the same thing that we looked at yesterday, and that is if we have a really, really small delta x, we can assume it's linear. And that's why it says here, approximately not equal. 
okay? Because you guys know x squared continues to curve. So even though we're looking at a very tiny interval, it is gonna be just slightly off, okay? But this is gonna give us a really good approximation of what the change in the y value is going to be, okay? Notice it's not 100% exact, but it's really, really close, okay? Now, these differentials, okay, as a definition here, we define dy as the derivative of f times the differential of x, okay? So dy is the differential of y, dx is the differential of x, and dy equals f prime of x dx, okay? So that's the definition of the differential. This is the property that we just saw. In many applications, we can approximate that differential as the delta y, okay? So, there are a lot of properties here that parallel properties of derivatives. If you have a constant multiple, you can pull the c out, it's c times the differential. If it's the differential of a sum or difference of two functions, you can take the differential of one plus or minus the differential of the other. The product rule still applies. The quotient rule still applies, okay? All of that still applies even with differentials because don't forget we are doing derivatives still, okay? Now, to find the differential, notice here all you have to do is if you have the function, you take the derivative, and then look, if I want the differential of y, I just need to multiply both sides by dx. Okay, and that applies on all of these. So the derivative of y equals two sine x is two cosine x. If I multiply both sides by dx, I now have the differential of y, two cosine x dx. Okay, and that applies for any of those, okay? You simply multiply your derivative by dx, and you've got the differential. And I'm going to plug in before I die today. All right, so what could we use this for? Let's do a real quick example, and we'll end with that, okay? A quick example would be we're going to use differentials to approximate the square root of 16.5. Okay? Use differentials to approximate the square root of 16.5. So we need to think to ourselves, first of all, okay, what function are we dealing with? Well, obviously the square root function. Okay? This is the square root function. Um, Secondly, we need to think about what we know here, all right? Well, if this is our square root function, it looks kind of like this. Here at 16, I'm up at 4, okay? So x is 16. Well, with our differentials, okay, our delta x, which is also dx, that delta x is 0.5, okay? Because now I want to find what is the value of my function when I'm at 16.5, okay? So I need to think here for a second. If I... This is my f of x. This, right, sorry, that's not f of x, that's x. This is my x, this is x plus delta x, right? This right here is f of x 
However, this value right here, the y value, is f of x plus delta x. And if you think about it, that's really what we're trying to find. Okay, so let's think about this. f of x plus delta x is going to equal whatever f of x is plus this change right here. Okay, so here we have right there, that is delta y. What is the change in our y value when x goes from 16 to 16 to a half and a half? So I'm going to put that delta y in my equation right here. Okay? Now, this is where our differential comes in. Okay? We said that the differential, or delta y, is approximately equal to f prime of x dx. So notice now we're, we no longer have an equation, but we do have an approximation. Okay? So at this point, we actually can go ahead and figure out, um, we can figure out the value of the square root of 16.5. Okay, so the, the square root of 16.5 is f of 16 plus 0.5, right? Well, that is going to be approximately f of 16 plus f prime of 16 times, what's dx? 0 0.5. Okay, so now you need to think about, okay, what is f prime of 16, okay? Well, f prime of x is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, right? Which is 1 over 2 root x. So that means f prime of 16 is 1 over 2 times the square root of 16, which is 1 over 2 times 4, which is 1 eighth. Okay? So, let's start filling in what we know. f of 16, we already know, is 4, plus 1 eighth times 0 0.5. Well, that's 1 16th, so that's 4 and 1 16th, not 4 and 1 16th, which is 4.0625. Okay? That's the approximate value of the square root of 16.5. Five. Okay? Now, if we tried to get something else further away, it would be less accurate, okay? The closer you are to the actual value you know, the more accurate you're going to be. Now, we are not going to get into those errors, how far off are we, but we can use this to approximate. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, we did learn another way we could have approximated this yesterday, right? The tangent line approximation. We could have done that. The thing with that is, though, that you would have had to find the equation of this tangent line. Okay? And use that tangent line to then figure it out. Okay, if we had, here's the tangent line, 1 8 x plus 2. If I would have plugged in 16.5, I actually would have gotten exactly the same thing that I got using the differentials.
okay? Mm -hmm. The nice thing with the differentials is we don't have to find the whole equation of the tangent line, okay? So a little bit, slightly different idea than the tangent line approximation, okay? And as you guys can see, if we plug this into our calculator, we'd actually get 4.0620. So it's only five ten thousandths off, all right? Which is pretty good, okay?